Well, hello, my name is Emmy, and welcome to my Minecraft hardcore world, where I've just started working on making a life for myself on this little island and the land that surrounds it. My goal in this world is not to make huge efficient mega farms and speed through the game, but it's to take time to enjoy the process and build a life in this world that I consider fun and cozy and a world that I actually want to spend time in and hopefully maybe even encourage you to do the same. As you can see, we've managed to build a nice starter home. We've got a few small crops going and we finally got some animals. We also managed to set up a small XP farm, but it also needs a bit of decorating. Basically, we're in a little bit of a chasing our tail situation. I need to organize and start harvesting some mangrove wood. But for that, I'd really like to get a tree farm set up. And for the tree farm, I really would like to have some glowstone. And for the glowstone, well, we need to go into the nether. <laughs> of course, that leads us to the point that we need a nether portal. Now for the nether portal, stay with me here. I want to put it right over that way so it's just across the water. But we're going to need some mossy blocks for the design and that's going to be one of the first things we work on getting today. Why do we have a cow outside of the pen? Uh, considering how hard they were to get gathered up, I think we probably need to go and investigate. So before we head over that way, we should probably grab ourselves some wheat so that we can gather any stragglers over there and take a quick nap so that we have daylight and don't get surprised by any creepy crawlies over there. Call me crazy, but I swear every time I come over here, that turtle is on that exact same block. My goodness, look at all you guys. How did all of you cows manage to get out of the dirt pen? Oh, well, all right, apparently you have learned how to climb ladders. I, I'm i extremely impressed at your abilities these days, fellas, but uh, uh, we're going to have to bring you back in here and fix that. All right, friend, try to keep an eye on things out here for me, would you? So the plan right now is there is a, well, I want to call it a spruce forest. What is it, a taiga? A taiga forest? Anyway, this one with all the spruce trees and it's got like the great big spruce trees and all that mossy cobblestone so the plan is to grab a whole bunch of this mossy cobblestone and i think i saw an azalea tree out here so there should be a lush cave underneath as well i grabbed more than i thought i would possibly ever need for the nether portal and then i ran across this little gem hey i know what this is i have never actually seen one in person I believe they call it a trail ruins. I've, I've heard of them. I've seen a little bit in other people's videos, but I have never ever experienced one on my own. So I think we're going to have to check it out. I know we need one of those little brush things and I'm pretty sure I remember it needs copper and a feather. So we are going to dig down and try and find ourselves a bit of copper. And here's exactly what we need. And then we just need to borrow a feather from a nearby chicken. And that should be everything we need. So I actually have, I don't remember what it's called. It's from Vanilla Tweaks, but it helps to identify the suspicious gravel a little easier. So hopefully all of that will make this quite a lucrative adventure. All right, we've got our first piece of suspicious gravel, so let's sweep it and see what fantastic treasure awaits us. And apparently it is, wow, it's a piece of white dye. Woohoo! Let's see what we get from the rest of it. So apparently these trail ruins are small ancient settlements that have a main road made up of cobblestone and stone bricks and they connect small buildings and a central tower made of terracotta and glazed terracotta. Within these ruins, you are likely to find assorted workstations, as well as, of course, the suspicious gravel that holds various treasures for you to uncover. You know what this reminds me of? I don't know if you guys do this or not, but have you ever driven through an old rundown neighborhood and tried to imagine what it was like back in its heyday when the houses were new the grass was green kids were playing in the yard and maybe times were just a little bit simpler 
that's kind of what this reminds me of. It's fun to think about things like that. All right, so I kept some chests up top here of all the blocks that I had to dig out for this thing, as well as the treasures I acquired. Here's what I dug out. Uh, ignore the gold in that chest. It's from a portal that I found nearby. As for the treasures, well, I'm going to be a good sport and say the real treasure was in the joy of finding and exploring this. But honestly, the actual treasures were... Eh. I mean, they're okay. It was fun. But uh, I spent so much iron going through shovels for this thing that I, I probably won't be doing it again anytime soon. But it was definitely a fun thing to do once. So we still have one last part of this journey is we need to go find the lush cave. And I see our site for sore eyes up there, the azalea tree, which is going to lead us to a lush cave underneath. And from the looks of the glow in the distance, we have finally found the lush cave we were looking for. Now it is definitely dark in here, so we've got to get the place lit up. <laughs> because as you can see, we do have a bit of a welcoming committee at the moment. There we go. I keep practicing, but I just am not good at those critical hits. Okay, uh, apparently we've got, oh, both a skeleton and a creeper tracking us down here. I, I know the best thing I can do is not panic. Let's see if we can get that skeleton to take care of the creeper for us, if we get just the right level. One more, maybe? Come on. Sweet. I appreciate the help, Mr. Skeleton. Uh, I'm afraid, though, it's now it's, it's your turn. Uh, oh, I missed. <laughs> All right. Why does it take me so many hits? There we go. Now, I just happen to think that the lush caves are one of the most beautiful things added into the game. Uh, I've been playing without shaders on, but in this instance, I think we need to turn them on and appreciate how absolutely magnificent this is. Now, I'm actually kind of a sucker for the warm mood lighting, and that is exactly what the glowberries provide down here. It's a combination of that, and then you've got all of the lush greenery, and the pink flowers, and the little axolotls being playful and jumping and swimming around in the water streams. It just is beautiful beyond description down here. And this is one of those things in Minecraft that I really think it's worth taking a few minutes to just really stop and appreciate the beauty of. Now while I do want to gather some resources down here, I very much want to preserve the beauty and I don't want to ruin it. So I'll probably take, you know, a little bit of resources from here, a little bit of resources from another part of the lush cave, but I really want to maintain the beauty down here. And, you know, at some point I think we really need to consider making some sort of a build down here, a little sanctuary or some sort of little getaway, but I, I don't think we should let this beautiful area go to waste. As I was grabbing those last bits of resources on my way back up to the surface, I managed to run across what I am going to declare as the smallest dripstone cave in the history of Minecraft. I, I looked around, I didn't see any anywhere like in the immediate vicinity. I'm sure they're there, I just didn't run across any other caves with it. But, you know, it's a lesson in being grateful for what you're given and making the most of it, and this will be perfect for exactly what we need. Now that we're back home and our pockets are a little bit lighter, I am going to go and set up that dripstone so that we can grow some more. And I haven't shown you guys this area yet, mostly because it wasn't finished. Uh, I did, by the way, grab another villager, and please notice that I've got the fresh animations pack on now, so they look a little bit more whimsical, which I like. I like personality. We'll see how we do with that. But, um... Yeah, I've got a little uh, area set up for the lava farm and some furnaces. And then we will go ahead and I believe all we need to do is have some water above the dripstones and let them do their thing and they will eventually 
drip down some new dripstone. I'm sure there's a much better way to explain that, but I think it makes sense. It's fairly straightforward. All right, and now that we've got all that taken care of, I think it is time that we can finally start getting to work on clearing the area and putting up the nether portal. There is actually one thing I keep forgetting to do, and that is I keep forgetting that we can make some scaffolding. That would have been so handy this whole time through, but I completely forgot. So let's do that before we go over and get ready to build the portal because it will definitely come in handy there as well. There's not much prep work to do. The only thing I really need to worry about is just kind of evening things out a little bit here, but it's just a, a little bit that needs doing. I'm really just kind of trying to make sure there's a good view from the house. So this is actually going to be a bigger design than what I would normally do for a portal because I don't really like portals. But I had seen a design done by a amazing YouTube creator called Mr. Matt Ranger and he did this extremely large but really cool looking overgrown nether portal. So I figured I would take inspiration from that and do my own take on it uh, and also include a little dash of color that you'll see later on. But I just really like the idea of using all the mossy bricks and the moss blocks. So that's what we're going to do. And it is a very, very large portal frame. Normally I do much smaller portals, like maybe a 3x3 three three opening, but this one, it's going to be 7x7 seven seven opening. But it should look amazing from the starter house. Do I dare? Oh, I'm actually getting better with those. That could come in handy someday. All right, the frame is done. I don't wanna, don't wanna waste that extra block of obsidian in the corner there. We are on a bit of a budget after all. So I just wanted to at least kind of get this started a little bit and tell you what I'm planning on doing. And then I'm sure we'll go to a time lapse, but the basic idea here is I want there to be like a grand stairway leading up to the portal frame and then a couple of oh kind of like short but thick solid pillars like on either side of the stairways and then once I actually get into the nether I was thinking of grabbing some nether rack and putting it in the center of those and having like the fire coming up and we can put some glow berries around the frame and some vines and just make it look like uh, a little bit of a magical, overgrown, mossy, rundown, but super cool looking portal. How's, how's that for a nice description for you? But I think you get the idea and I think you are going to like it. So I think we should just go ahead and get to the time lapse. Oh my gosh you guys it is done and I think it turned out amazing I am so excited to show it to you but of course I'm going to slowly creep down the stairs to build suspense and wait for the big reveal and well like it's kind of a reveal wait there we go it turned out exactly as I was hoping it would it's kind of overgrown a little bit run down but still has that magical quality about it, especially with, I love the particles floating in the air. I'm so glad we found that lush cave because that is exactly what this place needed. So now the only thing left to do is to light it.
well and eventually go through it, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna think about that yet. As much as I don't care for the portals, I find it oddly satisfying to finally get to light them, especially one this big. And here it is. Whoa. It's so awesome. And of course, you should know me by now. We have to turn on shaders. Oh my gosh, you guys. I actually, I want a little bit more glowstone up at the top. I just didn't have enough. I just had the uh, leftovers from the wandering trader earlier. All right, I wanted to run to this other side because this is the side that the sun hits it on. Ooh, it's beautiful. It's exactly how I hoped it would turn out. I think it's a perfect fit for our little castaway island here. So my plan of attack, since we don't know where we're gonna land, is to prepare for everything. I'm gonna grab some gold in case we end up in a crimson forest, which I would be totally okay with. I like crimson forests. And just in case we end up in a warp forest, which I would also be happy to be in, we are going to make ourselves a carved pumpkin so that we are safe from any endermen. I mean, really, just look at me. I, I am definitely a force to be reckoned with. The, uh, the pumpkin head is definitely intimidating. All right, I know we have to do this. <laughs> uh, I'm actually, like, legitimately nervous, but we'll be okay. We've got a shield. We've got our wits about us. And where are we? Ooh, not my favorite landing spot. But it's not the worst. Uh, my biggest thing is I hate the magma cubes. Yes, you, buddy. Uh, but it seems like we are kind of in an okay spot as far as basalt deltas go. I would say this and then probably a soul sand valley would be my other most least favorite. Those are the ones I fear not coming out alive in. But I think if we build out this platform a little bit and make it a little bit more of a little safety spot, then uh, I think we're okay. It seems like we're uh, a little bit protected up here. Hopefully. I'm really hoping that there is a crimson forest and a warp forest nearby so that we can get those wood types and, of course, the shroom lights that I love so much. It's a little tricky to tell through the fog, but I think we've got ourselves a fortress. So we might have to wander on over there and take a little peek inside. We're going to have to be careful because we do not have very good enchantments on our armor at this point. I'm just... I'm too nosy. I don't think I could possibly not go over there and at least just take a peek inside. And sometimes you find those clusters of glowstone, so maybe we'll get lucky with that too. We will just take our time. We're not going to panic and we will always have an escape plan. If we do all that, we should be just fine, unless it's super gnarly, in which case we will just turn around and pretend like this never happened. Oh, wow. I was just digging straight and I thought we had to turn right, but uh, apparently this goes right into it. So that works out splendidly. Okay. Nice and easy is going to be the key to success in here. Well, unless we need to run like crazy backwards to get out of a bad situation. All right, this is one of the tricks I do in a fortress, is I always will block off three high so that if there are any wither skeletons, which is probably what I fear the most out here, um, they are a little bit over two blocks high, so they cannot get through that. So it's a, a very good safety measure to take. Speaking of taking, I'm going to take all of this quartz as well. All right, we're just going to take a little peek downstairs. And we are going to grab all of this nether wart and this soul sand. And as soon as we get a brewing stand, we can start brewing. Oh, we'll need some blaze rods too, though. And the soul sand I'm really happy about because then we can get our water elevator uh, in the downstairs that goes to the upstairs in the starter home. We can get that up and running. And I'm hoping and guessing that since there is a warp tree here, we should have a warp forest nearby. Another thing you'll see me do all the time is I'm always placing torches on the left whenever I am going away from what I would consider a starting point. That way, when it's time to go back, I simply follow the torches on the right-hand side. It's kind of like leaving a little breadcrumb trail. I hope I don't regret saying this, but we have had it extremely easy so far. 
We haven't really had any mobs to deal with, and we've already found two chests. Whoa! That is about as good as it gets. Actually, I like the gold as well, but, uh... Starting to run a little bit low on inventory space, so I think I'm going to leave it for now. Well, he just looks so cute and innocent down there. Alright, should we try to coax him down here? I do actually like to try and get the wither skulls. Although, uh, I may be a little more timid about fighting the wither in hardcore, but we'll see. I mean, this is a, oops, a pretty safe way to do it. That's why I like this method. And nothing but a lousy piece of charcoal. Alright, is there any glowstone that's doable? That might be. It's a little bit... What the? What? I... I I have no idea where that came from. I didn't hear anything shoot at me. That was bizarre. If you know what that was, please let me know in the comments. But uh, I think I'll just build a little safety wall. I don't even see any blaze nearby. I have no idea where that came from. All right, this, I'm not going to lie, this kind of freaks me out a little bit. I get a little weak in the knees at that height. I don't like heights in real life, and I don't like heights in the game. But we really need the glowstone, and that's probably the closest that we've been. So we're going to have to put, uh, put our big girl pants on and go for it. And, and, and for the boys watching, put, please put your big boy pants on. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like, this makes my hands sweaty. I, this is super nerve-wracking. So all I'm trying to do here is get a little bit of a platform underneath the glowstone so that hopefully... Oops. <laughs> hopefully we don't lose any pieces of it. This should be enough to get us by for now. And then hopefully future exploration will yield a little bit easier glowstone to get to. Oh my goodness, that was definitely nerve-wracking, but we did it, and we've got some glowstone, and I'm never going to go do that again. <laughs> Hopefully. And that's where the torches on the right definitely come in handy, because it now leads us right back to finding the portal so we can finally get back home. So we'll definitely have to make this place look nicer in the future, but you know... Today was just really more about survival. So before I do anything else, the very first order of business, oops, too high, is going to be to put in the glowstones that I wanted so badly. And after that, I can add the final pieces that I'm really excited about as well. I just love the idea of having those fires burning brightly. They just, it gives kind of a nice cozy vibe, but it also makes this thing a presence, if you know what I mean. But I think that pretty much wraps things up for this episode. I'm so glad that you decided to join me and you spent some time with me. And I hope to see you again on the next one. Alright, love you guys. Bye-bye.